Um, hey all, uh, welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning meeting. Um, it's Wednesday, September 16th, and uh, this is uh, Neil Caden, Exakai Community Coordinator. Um, in the chat room, there is a link to the Etherpad. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking on that and uh, going ahead and signing in, and then we'll uh, we'll start the agenda, start going through it. Um, today's agenda is seeing, hearing some background ruffle in there. Okay. Um, today's agenda is uh, let me go ahead and sign in myself. Cool. Thank you for signing in, everyone. Um, welcome, and uh, you certainly are welcome. Thank you for, for joining. Uh, we have project updates and announcements. Any new announcements or project updates uh, going on in the community? Um, we have uh, Jira of the Week uh, to review. We've got lessons, uh, QA testing, script development, I, I don't know if I spelled my name wrong or that's weird. Anyway, there it is. And that's going to be more of a conversation and question answer and kind of explaining where QA is. Um, Louisa was kind of, Lee was kind enough to provide um, a copy of a Maris test plan, which if she doesn't mind, I'll share with the group and that might help us take off. Lessons was one of the places we didn't have a test plan, but now we have at least the start of a test plan thanks to Maris. Um, and then we might, if we need it, um, we were thinking we would have some continued conversation around the harmonizing and improving terminology uh, discussion and see if we can just kind of push that forward a little bit more and then discuss uh, future topics and schedule future topics and wrap up an adjourn. So that's our agenda. Um, usually I, I, it might be helpful if we paste the future topics uh, below um, so that people see what's coming up and what we have open sessions and then we can kind of think about I think we have open sessions coming up pretty soon so we might want to think about how we want to manage them if we want to cancel those that we don't have uh, any specific topic or if we want to make them more open forum or round robin birds of a feather type of thing so that's something to think about um, so first of all any project updates and announcements I just have a quick uh, reminder um, regarding the virtual conference. The call for proposals is still open. It's open until the 20th, so you've got four more days to get your uh, proposals in. If you've not yet submitted, um, I encourage everybody to think about um, possibly submitting something. And again, you got until the 20th to do that. So that's it. Thank you. Do you would you like to paste the link uh, to the to that in the uh, Etherpad, Wilma? Sure, let me go grab the link. Hang on one sec. Okay, thanks. Let's see, I also noticed there's uh, comments here, uh, one private, one public here. So Leah Berman ha Bergman, I'm sorry, has an update. Um, their developers uh, have completed the email notification for Samago. Instructors and students receive an email confirmation as students submit their assessments. They plan to contribute it to the community soon. Cool. Thank you. Is that from Dayton? Or where, where are you from, Leah? University of Dayton. Thank you, Leah, and thank you, University of Dayton, for that contribution. Very, very nice. Um, so I will mention that, uh, OK, so uh, I'll mention a quick thing, which is that um, there is discussions going on we're getting close to this farm concept which was inspired a couple of um, years ago at an Aperio conference we talked about having a Kickstarter like environment and so there's been a group working on some ideas for what that would look like and and really it's about providing support and um, help documents to people who want to launch projects to improve Sakai or to improve other Aperio projects and so our plan is to uh, run what we've got so far by the Aperio um, project leads group to see if they uh, like our mission and vision and can help us fill in some blanks about how their cultures work and um, and also by the Sakai PMC and um, so you'll be hearing more about that we'll probably I might write, write up a short newsletter um, article and uh, 
and um, we'll be doing a presentation on that at the uh, Sakai Virtual Conference also. So that's something that's had, and FARM stands for Funding and Resource Management. Um, so that's that's something that's in the works. Um, also be on the lookout for uh, uh, accessibility. There uh, should be an accessibility announcement soon. They've been working on the Raleigh plan and having really great success in fundraising. Um, I can paste in a link to that if you're interested so you can follow along. Uh, Matt Claire from Brock University has done a really great job of keeping the Confluence page updated and uh, so that's that's going along well. And I see that Laura Geckler has an announcement uh, uh, for a survey that's coming soon. Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of exciting that um, we are finding a, uh, emails to all the known Sakai installations in the entire universe, uh, whether they're piloting, testing, you've been in production for years. Most of you on this call, I think, would be aware that if we, if you navigate to jira.sakaiproject.org, that there is a, well, it's not really a JIRA, but it's that format. It's a, it's where each institution who's running Sakai can put in their data for their production instance. Uh, it could be, and there's space there for granular da data like uh, whether you run a MySQL or an Oracle database, whether you host it yourself, what the, yes, thanks, Dave, that's that's the place. Uh, production data is there. The only difficulty is that it's, um, it's so hard to go around nagging the whole community. Hey, you know, update your data if you've, if you've uh, updated your Sakai software or if your staffing is different or, or whatever. So um, at this time, I, I've been able to utilize the um, Notre Dame Qualtrics license to create a survey basically of those same questions. And uh, some of us here at Notre Dame have agreed to the tedious task, <laughs> you can volunteer too, let me know, um, of taking the survey results, basically the answers to those questions, um, and putting them back into JIRA. We're planning this as a kind of a one-time thing just to get that data updated and and be more, you know, have more broad uh Yes, we could, Dave. I'm wondering when would be a good time to pull the trigger on this survey. Uh, it does depend on email addresses, and, and some of our institutions will get multiple copies because we're not really sure who the person who would fill out the survey is. Um, but uh, I think it's better to over-distribute it than under-distribute it. And, um, and Right now, that production database in uh, Sakai Project only has 222 records, and of those records, I think there's there's a number of us who haven't updated our records in the last couple of years, and uh, don't look for Notre Dame, because we might be one of them. <laughs> anyway, it's in the works, and um, if you do have uh, feedback about how to get the best email addresses or make sure we're not skipping anyone. I did go through an extensive, I don't know how many weeks it took me, I was trying to figure out how to scrape the web or how to get the Sakai copyright info div tag that most of us leave in the bottom of our of our footer uh, that's on the page, but it's not visible on the front of the page, it's a div tag on the back end to, to a class. and. Anyway, we ended up getting the uh, getting the screen scraping just a copy and paste from a Google search into a Google spreadsheet and cleaning it up manually. Um, and then Niels contributed um, some of the email addresses, the ones that are there at at Prod. He gave gave us those. Yeah, yeah. So we'd really like to um, get the most current data possible and. One of the exciting uses for this is that uh, there have been articles posted recently that say that Sakai is gaining in market share, but because we don't really have current data, it's hard to say whether that's just perspective or opinion or whether there, there's evidence behind it. So we'll be collecting the evidence. Thanks, Dale. Thank, thank, Laura. thank you, Laura. Um, Louisa, do, do you want to give an update on um, the uh, LEAP 
project? Oh, yes. Thank you, Neil. Um, the LEAP project, uh, the working group met last Friday. Um, we discussed the updates since the summer and also um, the plans for the future. Uh, we decided to write a summer report for the phase one um, and then submit to the Sakai virtual conference. Um, then we want to hear more feedback from the community about the lessons, how we move on to phase two. Right, that's the most most recent update uh, of LEAP. And also, uh, I think we will work with the UX group to run more testing on the new features in lessons. So still uh, strongly recommend the whole community to try out the new features in lessons and give us feedback. Uh, this is LEAP. Anything to add, Neil? Oops. Hello? I had, to I had to unmute myself. Um, no, I think that's that's pretty good. I think Louisa, you mentioned you were you're working on like a report. Is that right, or some yep. sort? Of, yeah. yeah. And uh, phase, phase one report. Yeah, so that should be interesting. Is that going to be something that's shared broadly, or is it primarily for the stakeholders who invested in the in the phase one? Uh, yes, we definitely will share with the community. Cool. Yeah. Okay, thank oh, you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a quick update on uh, Tricia. Uh, Tricia will meet today right after the TTN learning call. So the, um, the Tricia committees will welcome new members mm -hmm. this year. I think uh, some of you are here <laughs> in this call. Uh, so it's 11 o'clock. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Louisa. Uh, yeah, that reminds me also at 11 o'clock uh, or right a.m. Uh, Eastern, right after this meeting, is a Sakai Morpheus call. Um, that's our regular check-in with Morpheus. Um, and we are, uh, they are updating documentation for technical documentation on how to uh, implement um, different types of skins, which is pretty cool. And we're planning on doing, they're planning on doing a presentation September 30th at noon Eastern time on, uh, so that taking the documentation and then showing people how you can modify the, even the Morpheus skin. So to meet your local needs to experiment and we're having a skin contest. So that'll also help you if you're, if your institution is interested in participating in the skin contest. So you can come up with the most beautiful, interesting, creative, um, content uh, skin for Sakai and there'll be a judging panel that will look at all um, those and there's I think $400 uh, worth of prizes will be awarded on the skin contest so uh, it will be announced at the Sakai virtual conference so September 30th is the um, you know you could start working on your skins now if you if you know how and if you want to play around or, or mock-ups you can go to trunk and see what Sakai uh, Morpheus looks like now we'll be looking both for desktop you know size as well as mobile size um, which you can you can emulate that by dragging your screen, uh, your browser window smaller uh, to see what it looks like in a uh, smaller uh, area. So that's coming, and um, we almost have the judging panel in place, and then there'll be more information on how to submit that coming up in the upcoming weeks and uh, final judging uh, that will be announced for the Sakai Virtual Conference. Um, also, I'm guessing everyone's probably interested in Sakai 11. Uh, we are still primarily waiting on Gradebook NG, and the Gradebook NG folks uh, tell me that um, that they should be having an announcement pretty soon on the status of uh, Gradebook NG, and that it should get merged into uh, Trunk pretty soon. But I don't I don't have an exact date um, that I hear from them. But that that's pretty exciting. And then we'll once we get it merged in Trunk, and we have it has time to burn in. Uh, meaning people get to look at it. We look, get to look at it from a developer perspective, QA perspective, you know, how, what's the feature gap? Is it all there? Then I think we'll have a re be able to develop a more real, you know, a realistic um, timeline for Sakai 11. Although I'm still thinking, you know, we're definitely almost certainly not going to be able to make December of this year, which was our original goal. So most likely it would be um, sometime in 2016, um, first quarter or second quarter, maybe before the, um, the uh, Sakai open to Perio conference. So that's kind of the rough thinking at the moment on Sakai 11. So um, 
Let's see. Any other, any questions or, oh yes, the September 30th demo is at noon Eastern. Um, it will be announced broadly, it will be on Big Blue Button, um, and there'll be multiple announcements. So it will be, you know, virtual, of course, and, uh, and like a regular presentation. So noon Eastern, we're at minus four GMT right now. Um, so for like, I think for British summertime, that's 5 p.m. And for um, Central European time, it's uh, five, let's say, I think it's six, 4 p.m., something like that. Any, any other questions? All right, well, we'll move on. Uh, a lot of announcements there took a little bit longer than uh, than we had budgeted, but I think that's okay. Uh, the next is we're at the JIRA of the week, which is Lesson Builder 518. Um, I'll go ahead and do screen sharing, and also I think there's an image here that was sent to me from Gwen. Let's see. It should be uploaded into the JIRA now. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Okay. Uploaded as a... Word doc, huh? Yeah, I just took a couple of screenshots hoping to provide some context of what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and screen, uh, share my screen so people, everyone can see the same thing. Share. You to start describing what we're... Shh. Well, just let me give it a second to, to go get up and that way um, people can see it while you're talking. So just take a second here. You want to continue and run. I think it's about to come up. Here we go. Okay. Um. Well, let me back up. So my name is Gwen. I'm from Texas State. And this JIRA has to do with the lessons tool and how we link to forums. So at the moment, you can link to topic forums. And what we're proposing in this JIRA is the ability to link to the top level. So in the screenshot, you can see the, the lower screenshot is the forum itself, so law. Laws and ethics would be that top level, and then the topic forms being the three underneath. Screenshot above is what it looks like in the lessons page, linking directly to the topic forum. Now, normally that's fine. It's not a big deal, except when we run into situations where we have team discussions. So in this circumstance, there are three specific team forums, and what we were hoping to do is just have the option to link to that top-level forum on the lessons page, and then the teams can go into the forums tool and then select their appropriate team. This situation isn't that big of a deal because there are only three teams, but when the, when the team numbers start to grow, then it also kind of gets on the lessons page. So. So oh, simply put, we just wanted the ability to link to the highest level, the, the overarching level. Um, people are having a little bit of trouble uh, hearing you. I don't know, Gwen, I don't know if you have a way to make, be a little louder or... About that. About my volume, but um, a little bit better? I think so. Okay. Um, so from what I understand, it's a fairly simple fix, but we just wanted to give some measure to the actual issue. And and actually, I'm curious to see what other people are doing when they have group forums. So Gwen, uh, Dave is posting some questions here. Would individual groups see the other group's topic areas? Um, well, what we do is we no, we just assign um, to the the group is assigned to its specific group forum. So no, they wouldn't see the other team forums. 
Um, this is Dave at Johnson University. We have uh, we've done some of this sort of thing, and like I understand, you're asking basically can we use a single topic link or a single forum link as opposed to a topic. So, a lot of times in our in some of our courses, we have students that are asking being asked to engage in discussions with of their group, and in order to make that work so that they're not actually discussing the content with people outside of their group, in other words, the other groups, we go through and set up different topics that represent, well, the same topic that's representative of each of those groups. And then within the lessons tool, um, in the edit button that you see there on the screen, you can actually specify that that particular topic is only visible to that particular group if you're using groups. Okay. Does that sort of address the issue of being able to just simply create a link to the topic as opposed to every single? In, in that case, what our students have seen is they only see the topic link for their group. They don't see the other right. ones. Only the instructor sees yeah. it for. But that may not necessarily get at what you're you're attempting to 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 accomplish. Yeah, you know, sometimes it comes up where we have discussion topic forums set up as just workspaces. So we don't actually, we wouldn't actually link to the specific topic forum. It's more of an optional space for them to go to, but I think it would be helpful if we could just link to that top level, the discussion level, to expose that work area if they wanted to use it rather than and linking directly to the topic. So the way that I see this being uh, sort of leveraged is if you told a student, you know, um, I want you to engage in two of the five topics that are there, you could just mm -hmm. simply take them to the overall forum instead of actually having to link to every single one of the topics. Right, right. I'm just thinking overall it would just give us more flexibility as far as how we help students navigate and work the forum. And then they could be set up in all kinds of different ways. Yeah. Yes, Dave. That's that's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Any other uh, you, uh, input that you're looking for, Juan? Um. Well, at this point, I guess I'm just looking for viability of where it might go as far as getting implemented. Um, have you spoke with uh, Charles Hedrick about it? Yeah, I did. He said that it's a fairly simple fix, um, but that he doesn't really decide on um, priority. So I wanted to give it some exposure here. So what I what I would suggest for people who are who are saying it's a great idea um, and like the idea, yeah, that you vote up for that. You put a comment maybe in JIRA or, or uh, you know, put some votes on. We haven't, don't really have a process per se of like looking at topics and how many votes they get, but I think on an issue, uh, people do comment on it and um, Matt can help. So let, let him know that there's interest. Yeah. That would be super. Thank you. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you, so, <laughs> thank you Gwen. Um, so the next topic is uh, Lessons QA scripting test development. And um, this is intended not to be so much a presentation. I didn't create a presentation. It's really more discussion uh, about QA. Uh, uh, what we do is we have um, scripts which are, and I can share examples of, of, of scripts. Let's see if this is one here. Oh, this is actually our list of all the scripts that we have for all the different tools. And this is linked off of a Confluence page. You can get this. It's a Google Doc. Um, I don't know. Let's read these deep alter. I don't know what that is. But anyway, you can see that we have scripts for different tools. Other tools are missing scripts. Um, and what a script looks like, let's see if I can find one. This is one I'm in the process of working on, which is a Simon's peer review, which is one we don't have yet. But hopefully, I'll finish this and we'll have it soon. And the idea is that we need 
you know, it's a step-by-step -step where folks can put in their name, which uh, server and browser they're using, because that's really important. Um, most features work across most browsers and OSs, but sometimes there are OS, you know, or browser-specific things, like something that won't work in Internet Explorer or has a problem in Chrome or whatever it is. So it's really helpful to know uh, which one you're doing, which uh, browser you're using. And then we'll have step-by-step -step, um, scripts that people can go through and then figure out if they, and just put whether they passed or failed. So put a little yes in if it's uh, succeeded, no in if it's failed. Um, T, I've been using more for triage where they're not sure, they have a question. That usually turns yellow on some of the newer scripts, so I'll have to play around with that a little bit. And then we'll have comments in there. And typically, if you run into a problem, you open a Jira. So this is kind of our reporting process for doing QA. And we go to Sakai 11, we're going to have a lot of QA. We're going to need a lot of people stepping up. Um, some institutions use student workers, which I consider, uh, I suggest you also consider, because that can be really helpful. Um, and I'm sure they'd be willing to share some of their best practices in engaging students in the QA testing. And um, so I was just looking at where the gaps were in our testing. I noticed that, um, you know, we don't have any scripts for lessons, although uh, I guess we did have one from Excel, which I need to go back and look at, so I didn't even realize that. And then Louisa uh, just recently shared one with me uh, from Marist. And Louisa, is it okay if I show the Marist one? Yes, great, thank you. So, and the Marist one's kind of cool. I was looking at it, and it's organized a little bit differently than um, than the other scripts that, that we have in Sakai, but there's, it's similar. Um, the difference is that I noticed they put the test objective in and then put the steps as one lump. Uh, you know, step one, step two, step three, um, expected result, actual result, I really like that. Uh, have the browsers uh, comments and do the same sort of reporting, uh, opening Jira's, I presume. Um, so we do have it. I was also noticing with this script, so we now have a start, and I can compare it to any, I didn't even realize we may have, we may have some old lesson scripts to look at. Um, one thing I didn't see, maybe Louise, you could, you could uh, comment on this, is I didn't see anything that, that addressed workflow, because I think workflow is one of the ch more challenging kinds of things to test, for example, you know, peer assessment and assignments, that requires a lot of thought process and a lot of setup, um, and you really don't know if you succeeded until you go through the whole process. What, what I'm seeing in here is um, individual, um, let's just look at example objectives, like using the import common cartridge, exporting common cartridge, the individual functionality, which is hugely helpful, because that provides a great baseline for just those pieces. Um, but then I'm wondering, you know, again, what what type of uh, workflow we need here? Um, like, there's ads of content. Like, like for example, um, adapt, adaptive release. Lisa, is there? Do you guys have like a um, one where you have an adaptive release test case or anything like that? Um, I'm not the um, person in, responsible for the QA in the office. Um, it's a DD Hurricane, so okay. she has a better idea how to use this. Uh, I mainly as uh, work it as a tester in this. Uh, basically, we divide people into groups, and each group will um, take charge of uh, uh, several of the objectives and go on go down the list. And uh, if changes or um, bugs are uh, that identify they will put into a our internal Jira board. Um, then that's basically the workflow because we have a small office. Then that's easy to coordinate. Uh, but if you do the QA in a community, uh, you know people are from different institutions. Obviously, the workflow will be more complicated. Yeah, so you probably are more of an expert on that, you know, how to coordinate workflow among many different institutions. Well, actually, the workflow I was referring to is more the workflow of a feature, you know, where, where you can test certain features, like you can test certain features, for example, of assignments, um, of just adding assignments and trying different, um, you know, different attributes of assignments, like uh, do you allow 
electronic, do you not allow electronic submissions, or do you allow um, uploads and text, or only text, or only uploads, and you can kind of test individual pieces of an assessment as an exam assignment as an example, but then there's overall workflow, you know, in terms of like peer assessment where you have to make sure you have set things up so you have multiple students and that the students can grade each other and you have this whole process that you have to get through and see if that whole process is working, not just the individual um, selections you make on, on that. So when I was referring to workflow, I was thinking of the tool workflow. Um, uh -huh. so Okay, I think that's how we um, lay down the different objectives. So you, if you can see here, you know, it's uh, 920, 921, you know, you have to go down the list. That's the workflow. And so, for example, if in lessons, you have to test the added text first. Um, yeah, if you... Um, can you scroll up? Yes. Yeah, That's so for example, yeah, so for example, add a student content. Uh, to test this function, you have a series of tasks, right? So add a student page, create a page, going down the list. And this is an entire workflow. So you break it down into smaller pieces. I gotcha. Yeah, but again, this is the test script we used the last time. So huh. it's the old 2.9, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we still have to make a lot of changes to this to fit in our next upgrade. And of course, uh, there are a lot of new features in lessons this year uh, in the uh, Sakai 11 truck. So we have to make a lot of changes on the workflow and the test objectives, etc. Yeah. So, you know, I guess what I'm looking for uh, is it's really great that, that you're willing to share the test scripts. It's in a little different format. There's some things I definitely like like in this format. And um, one of the things I'll be working on over the next, you know, few months is seeing if we can kind of revitalize a QA team approach. So we've had a lot of success, I would say, in getting people to participate in QA. Um, we sometimes, you know, get 20 or 30 people and we need you to keep thinking about how you can participate or have um, folks participate is really important, obviously, for uh, for doing releases, right? Um, and we're going to have a new gradebook as well, as well as the new changes to lessons. So that's why I'm just trying to think through is how do we find people to help with the scripts? Maybe there's institutions like Maris that have scripts they can donate and, and they're more up to date. Um, also thinking about like what particular workflows that we should make sure to cover um, that are, you know, because we want to, the purpose of QA is to break Sakai. We actually want to find problems with it because if we find problems with it during our QA cycle, that means the developers have a chance to respond to it and we can make a, an educated um, assessment of when Sakai is ready to release. You know, we're never going to catch everything. There's nothing like being in a production environment. Um, there's no way currently we can replicate that, but, but we, you know, at least can do a really good job of identifying um, bugs, prioritizing them, and, and then being able to assess like which ones we got to get fixed before we do the release. So, um, so I don't know if anyone has any thoughts or comments or questions about QA or uh, maybe feedback to me in terms of what would help you get started if you're interested in participating in QA, um, that sort of thing. So Terry writes how to, let's say, let me look in the comments here so I see, uh, no specific questions, which is a way out of day. So how to get involved in the QA process. So we do have a overview um, page on, uh, that's probably a good, good place to start reading about, you know, the purpose of QA and a little bit about what's required for QA. Um, I can paste that in. Um, I'm also happy to do sessions about QA, sessions about JIRA. Um, so that's another way. And also, uh, if people were interested in helping to review test scripts or create new test scripts, um, especially as, like I said, as we're adding new features onto the tools, it's really helpful to test it or think of cases where we want to see if it's going to break. So if you can think of ways where, um, you know, that are particularly important to your institution, you know, does it work this way? That could end up being uh, a test script. Um, 
So yeah, documentation is here. The, the overview is you make sure you have a JIRA account because you, need, you know, often need to either be able to report in JIRA or look at information in JIRA. Um, I would recommend signing up on a QA email group because there's a lot of things I send to the QA group that I will not send necessarily to the users group or the Aperio Teaching and Learning group. Um, a lot of times I'll send email to both. So if you're already on the dev group, you'll get all the QA email, but if you're on the QA email, QA email, I won't send all the, we won't send all the dev stuff because there's a, you know, it's a much higher volume and a lot of, a lot of technical information you probably don't need to know. Um, and, uh, and then look for, you know, we really need QA at any time. Uh, it's like an ongoing need, but we tend to have certain times when we put a lot more focus on it. Um, and then I'll make, you know, these broader announcements and ask for testers and create um, sign up sheets for people to go to and uh, and uh, can get started that will have like you know sign up for this test script or sign up to um, verify JIRAs and um, so that's basically it then all you need to do is um, we do have QA instances and we have information about what the latest QA is so I'll typically create uh, test plans so just as an example uh, from 10.5 I hope it's a good example um, Let's see. So in 10.5, we have a, we typically have iterations of testing when we're doing a release, like a 10.5 release. So we had what we call RC releases, which are release candidates when we think we're really getting close to releasing. And um, let's see if that looks like. And then we'll I'll provide instructions about like what's the what's the main focus of the testing, um, where what's the QA server we're using because we do change which QA server we're using at different times. Um, for Sakai 11, for example. Probably we'll start testing on what we call master or trunk, um, and not an actual uh, QA server, but, but a nightly server. And if we need it, we, we can see if we can find a QA server special and then point to that. So you know where to test. And um, uh, I don't know if that answers your question because I'm just sort of rambling a little bit. But that's basically it. Make sure you got a Jira account. Um, contact me. Uh, go through. Um, this information on the QA homepage, you get an overview of what QA testing is about, and uh, and you don't have to wait for um, for an official announcement. I'm going to probably doing be doing an official announcement in about a month. Um, I'll probably we're probably going to have a major uh, another major uh, maintenance release for Sakai 10, and we have around uh, almost 100 issues that have been fixed in Sakai 10 post 10.5 that need additional verification to verify that those fixes um, did what they said they were going to do and didn't cause any other problems. <clears throat> and that's coming. And then, you know, again, at some point we'll have uh, Sakai 11. For Sakai 11, we really need to be starting to prepare now. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, in terms of developing the test scripts, because it can take some time. Developing test scripts is, is relatively time consuming. And so if we're going to be prepared for Sakai 11, you know, kind of now is the time to review our test scripts and to think about, you know, what test scripts we need and see if other institutions already have some scripts that are similar or start developing our own. Or maybe it would be fun to develop test scripts more collaboratively. I, I'd be willing to experiment like that. It's kind of, uh, um, you know, feels a little isolated when I'm working, for example, on creating the assignment peer review and really thinking that through. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's a good possibility. I was thinking about having a regular QA weekly uh, time frame people could jump on and talk about QA or have questions about QA, um, especially if we had some people working on test scripts or we could work together, um, or possibly making that more of even an open office hours concept where you could ask any questions. It didn't just have to be QA, but, but also available for QA. And if, if it would be helpful, I could, I could do a presentation on how to get involved in QA and go into a bit more detail but I don't really have time to go, go into a lot of detail right now because I'm just about out of time, I think. Thanks, Terry. Any other comments or thoughts or encourage, words of encouragement? <laughs> so QA is, is a lot of work, and, and like I said, we do have really great participation, and, and we need to keep that level as high as we can. <clears throat> Okay, well, if there's, if there's no questions, if you have any thoughts, uh, you know, kind of the way I do things is I announce, I do two, two kind of a two-pronged approach. I One, do general announcements, and I also have 
a list of people who have volunteered for QA and said it's okay to reach out to them. So if it's okay to reach out to you personally about QA, also let me know and let me know what your area of interest is and where you might be able to help. And then sometimes I'll like ping people and say, hey, I can really use your help um, in this area uh, for testing. So I'll keep you posted. Uh, so let's go on to the next agenda item, which is the, uh, let's see, where did the agenda go? I think it was a continuation from, from last week, right? Which my teaching and learning, uh, I think I lost the uh, etherpad somewhere. Let me scroll up here and get etherpad. <coughs> there you go. So we were uh, talking about last week um, harmonizing and improving terminology, and so we thought we would keep following up on that and see if there's some additional items to talk about. Adam, did you want to? Yeah, sure. I hope I'm not making too much noise now with my mic, my, my cheap microphone. Uh, presume you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good, good. Um, yeah, so, well, since last week, um, on the... Um, I think it was the user experience call, there's so many calls, I get muddled. Um, we decided that I should uh, canvas the lists to get people to add to the wiki page. And so the thing we, we went through last week, so I did that, and there was one or two comments. So I've made one or two small changes to the wiki page. There was, um, if I can remember rather than, um, yes, actually we were just talking about the tool names actually um, on, the, on the UX call. So there was a couple more uh, suggestions for site info and um, uh, I think that's it, yeah. So I added those onto the page. And there was another suggestion today about, uh, in a similar vein really, why is there a page order link and an edit tools link when they sort of do the same thing? Why can't they be combined? Which isn't trivial, but seems like a very good idea. So that's it's kind of sort of related to what we were talking about last week. So if anyone here um, has got any ideas, and let me just paste the URL of the, the wiki page. In, oh, you've done it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, if anyone else has got any, any suggestions, um, either edit the wiki page, or you can just tell me what your suggestions are, and I'll add them to the wiki page. And I think the idea was to have a vote at the virtual conference um, so do a sort of a poll with um, the tool and then suggested names and see what comes out top um, to, to sort of drive the initiative along. So um, so that, that, was, that was all about the tool names. Now, unfortunately, I can't quite remember where we got to last week because I ran out of time, didn't I? Um, so if anyone could remind me uh, where we got to, I'll, I'll carry on. I can't hear anyone. I don't know if that's normal. I'm looking at the chat here. It says, uh, mm. we were talking about behaviors of tools, let's say. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think maybe we were doing the first table on the page, which is the um, sort of inconsistent terminology. <clears throat> so I've just basically launched into the second part of the page <laughs> without talking about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Should we, should we just uh, have a quick look at what I've just been talking about? Uh, <laughs> it's so the, it's, the, it's the tool names, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, here we are, yeah. So uh, there's quite a lot of um, people talking about site info. Um, and I think, um, I think really what people would really like is to sort of split it into, a, into two tools, one for staff, one for students. But that's not trivial, whereas changing the name is. So the decision really is whether do we change the name um, um, or do we keep the, the same name? And what bears on that is that maybe uh, we would actually be splitting the two tool into two pieces later. So any name we do choose would only be short lived. And is it worth doing, you know, two sort of changes to the same tool? So um, I think any comments anyone has, uh, I can stick them on the. Um, on the wiki page, the proposed solutions column, and so, then. Um, um, are you suggesting this is Dave from Johnson University? Are you suggesting then that what we might do is 
split the site info tool to uh, sort of represent the two different functions, but that within the site info tool as it exists now, um, combine the page order and the edit tools function? Um, well, I, I wasn't uh, me particularly suggesting splitting the two. Uh, other people did. Uh, it does sound like quite a good idea. Um, but then again, it also sounds like a lot of work, really. <laughs> um, so, so that is a proposal. Um, I mean, somebody would have to step up to the plate and, and do it. Um, but, but I suspect that if somebody was going to do that, then it would probably be, uh, go down quite well. And then, yeah, there was a totally separate suggestion, which just really came up today, actually, as to uh, you've got your edit tools page and you've got the page order tool. And yeah, the page order tool's got a bad name. Um, and perhaps the edit tools page could have a better name as well because you do you can remove tools as well and things um, and so people were saying well why are there sort of two pages where you can add and remove tools um, you know we'll just combine them into one and combine the functionality which seems like a bit of a no-brainer but again it's it's not trivial and it's not not like changing the name of a tool which is just basically changing a string in a file it's doing a load of work so yeah, that's a proposal. Um, I, can't, I can't see it getting done for Sakai 11, um, but it is, you know, quite desirable. Okay, shall we? Shall I, shall I carry on? So I don't know whether I just can't hear people or whether no one's saying um, anything. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's saying anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just say if you could just uh, limit it to a few more minutes and let, let yes. me know. Well, really, I mean, I suppose it just goes down to everyone having a quick look at the page and then either um, editing it or emailing me or emailing one of the lists about things you might want to see added, really. So, um, I mean, we've got, um, there, there was a proposal to change the name of email archive, but that didn't seem to have a great deal of traction. Um, we have locally just done the change from schedule to calendar and absolutely everybody thought um, that was a good idea um, page order I just kind of mentioned it could have a better name but it could be combined and there did seem to be quite a lot of interest in renaming edit tools to manage tools uh, or possibly add I'm sorry add stroke remove tools um, and th that's all we've got um, quite happy to add more rows to the tables if anybody else has got a little pet pet gripe but um, yeah we, we can just leave it there I'll go through the the chat um, and uh, try and pull out anything that is, is relevant there and it, it, it okay. with it. thanks thank you Adam yeah and so remember folks um, you know feel free to edit the page on confluence and or if you have questions, you know, you can write to Adam and make suggestions as well. Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, we'll move on to the uh, next agenda item, which, uh, let's see, where did things go? Oh, I see. Uh, when I pasted it in, I got, uh, got a mess there. So we do have uh, meetings uh, scheduled for the next two meetings. Uh, Warpwire, Jolie is going to present that next week and we have big blue button folks uh, presenting on October 7th it looks like September 30th is open um, and October 14th is open and October 28th is open and then we have the Sakai virtual conference so I guess the question is for the group I mean there's two things one is any additional suggestions of things you want to just have informal discussions about you know we could do a little more of a round robin kind of uh, uh, meeting if we wanted to kind of checking in with each person like that's a format I don't think we really used very much um, um, we could uh, or if you want to see a particular presentation this thing you're interested in we can do outreach to to try and recruit like we've done in the past uh, we've had the Zerky folks present we've had uh, Czech Severance present I was planning to um, do outreach also to some of the other Aperio tools so that we just get familiarity with all the uh, projects out there because there's quite a few. Um, I haven't really started that process yet, but that's something that might come up. Um, and I guess another question is, should on the ones where we have open, you know, what do we want to do with those? Do we want to cancel them if we don't have them open? Like if uh, if we don't uh, by next session have September 30th anything scheduled, just 
just cancel that, or do people want to meet anyway and have some general discussion, or what are you guys thinking? Um, potential times for the oh, I see potential times for K presentation, Cherry. I'll I'll, uh, I'll put that out there sometime soon. Um, uh, and uh, I don't have it in my in my green yet. What the uh, times are for the QA presentation? If you, if you have some preferences. Let me know you, if you, said, have you said something about about doing a more detailed presentation on how we could get involved in um, in in the QA and yeah. just kind of help with the testing on all those different levels from ten five through eleven. I'm yeah. interested cool. myself. I'd like to know more. What are some What are some potentially good times for you? <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if this could be one of the topics in one of those blank spaces we have coming up. I think it might. Uh, my, I would anticipate actually needing like a full solid hour, hour and a half, and I wouldn't really have time for the typical other agenda items. So I could potentially use this time period for one, one of those open ones, and I might extend it a little bit beyond even an hour, and we would not do a typical um, project updates during the week. You know, I wouldn't go through all the, the those other pieces because I would really need all the time probably to go through uh, you know, the QA. So I, so I could take one of those times. It's a really good idea. Um, we also have the Morpheus meeting right after that, so I would have to probably limit it to an hour, which, which might be sufficient. I have to think it through and, you know, what aspect of the uh, And I suspect that not, I'm not sure if everybody on this call would be interested in QA, but that would be very cool if you were. And, uh, I wanted to hear that stuff. So that's a good idea. Thank you. Any other thoughts? It's a Kai communication project. Okay, cool. Thanks. So I'll put me down for that. That's like the marketing PR. Correct. All right. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Any other ideas or things you would like to hear, even if you yourself don't know how to uh, present uh, or know, you know, have a topic you want to present, or is there something you're doing at your institution you'd like to, to share? Hi, Neil. I got a question. Yeah. Um, I want to try out the new features in lessons, maybe set up some pages as an example. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but the trunk usually refreshes every night. Uh -huh. I, I just don't know if there's another way that I can, you know, go somewhere and set up pages and, and have it stable for a while for a demo or something. That's, that's a really great point, Louisa. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it may be getting close to time when we need a QA server, meaning one that is not refreshed, the data is not refreshed every day. Because um, doing some testing, sometimes we don't always have, um, you know, a couple of hours even in a row, let alone maybe sometimes more than that to really play around. And uh, sometimes we want to set up our environment and then come back and, and play in it later. So uh, let me look into that. Uh, um, there's two possibilities. One is the you know the nightlies. Maybe we could get our QA server set up on the nightly to reflect trunk. Um, the, the downside of that is that um, I think we are going to need in a month or two a 10.5 server, but I don't. I mean a 10.6 QA server, but I don't think we need that right now. So I could check with the QA team if they're up for that. The other option is if Marist or um, Rutgers or some other institutions, at times folks, um, different institutions have, have offered QA servers and then they could maybe, you know, get a copy of, what's with, we're kind of calling it master instead of Trump, that's, that's a reflection of uh, a new way that the system's being managed um, for 11, yeah, for Sakai 11, so, um, so that's another option, so I can look into both of those, I think it's a really good idea to 
to find a QA server and take a snapshot. Let's see, I see some things that are going back in the comments. Uh, Lord, you know, if that, let's see, I'm probably way behind here. Um, let's see a question about class rosters is the last thing. We're talking about 11, yeah, Dave, so I see that, and Louisa answered you, right? We're talking about 11, so we're talking about what's in um, what we call master. Uh, that's, that's the GitHub terminology, so we used to use terminology reflecting SVN, which is where um, things used to be stored and are still stored for 10, um, which is a source code control management system. And in GitHub, they call things master. So we're looking at the master version, which right now is essentially 11. But it's going to be a while before we're um, going to split it off and, and have a separate instance for QA. But I think we're probably at the point even right now where it might, it might be really helpful to have an 11 server. We just need to find somebody to um, to bring up a server and figure out how frequently we want to refresh it. For example, once once the um, the gradebook is merged, probably we'll want to refresh that. Okay, well, thanks. I'm not sure I followed all the questions. I don't know if anyone wants to summarize, summarize or if there's any questions somebody can point out to me. Um, otherwise, I would say let's go ahead and, and wrap up for today, unless there's any other issues folks have or questions. I knew I'm moving on to the Twizia meeting. Is the meeting in this room too? When you um, scheduled it? Yes, uh, meeting of Twizia is in room two. The meeting of um, the Morpheus is in room three. Okay, got it. I don't want to have a conflict. Thank you. Right, no conflict there, yeah. One thing that, that Louise would be aware of, but it's more for me, because I've noticed that even if I stop recording this meeting, if you guys record that meeting, it's going to get recorded as one giant bundle. I'm going to then have to split, but I can worry about that later. Oh, you will? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've even had meetings separated by as much as a couple of hours on the same room on the same day, and they all got lumped together as one recording. So that's just, uh, I guess that's a question. I have a couple of questions for Fred and Jose's, uh, or uh, Jesus, uh, I think his name is. So I need to probably ping them on that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Right. It's good to well, know. Yeah, no problem. But all I have to do is I, I download the, the recording from Big Blue Button from Blindside Networks, and then I use like QuickTime Pro or something to just split them, and then I upload them separately um, into YouTube, which I think I'm a week behind in uh, uploads, by the way. So uh, um, I think that's all I've got for now. I'm sure I'm missing something, but... Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for coming, and we will uh, see you next week. Thanks. I'm going to end the recording now. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's get it started. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Louisa Lee from Marist College. Um, I have uh, here with you Cheryl Brown from uh, South Africa. Um, sorry, I still cannot pronounce the whole name of your college or university. That's uh, fine. <laughs> so uh, we are the co-chair this year. Uh, we are very glad to serve you. And uh, But I think first of all, I'd like to thank Selva uh, for serving the community so well in the past three years. And I'd like to give you uh, my sincere uh, gratitude for helping us to transit and uh, moving forward uh, for this year. Thank you, Selva. Um, okay, so we get started. So you guys have seen the uh, Etherpad for the agenda this year. Uh, first, I'd like to do a round of uh, introductions. We have some new members. Uh, I see all of them here. I'd like to everybody introduce each other, just uh, get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and also we'd like to pose a very difficult questions to the new members so they feel uh, part of the group. Um, okay, so I will start first myself. Uh, my name is Louisa, you just uh, heard. Um, I work 
Emeritus College. I'm an instructional designer. Um, I've been involved in Sakai community for a little over three years now. I've been attending the Perry Conference. Uh, this office has been very active in the Sakai community. So I've been involved in the teaching learning community from the start. So last year, I joined the LEAP uh, committee, which stands for the Lessons Enhancement Project. Uh, and then I've been on the Twisia committee for two years. I'm very glad to serve as a, a co-chair with Cheryl this year. Thank you. Um, OK, so who's next? We could go alphabetical order down the list, seeing it's got us all lined up. Sure. OK, Beth. Beth it is. Beth, can you talk? OK, I don't think Beth can talk. It doesn't move at all. OK, uh, I guess, Cheryl, uh, you are on the list. You are next okay. on the list, yeah. Um, so I'm Cheryl Brown. I work as a lecturer at the University of Cape Town and the department I work for is called Centre for Innovation in Learning and Teaching. Um, I do a lot of teaching of postgraduate students because we have a postgraduate diploma and a master's in educational technology. And um, we've been using Sakai you know, for years and years now as a university. Um, and so I think I first came to the Sakai conference a couple of years ago as a Twista um, award winner. And that was my introduction sort of into the community. And I thought it was such a fabulous community that I wanted to join the, the committee straight afterwards. So I've been working with um, many of these guys just on the Twista um, committee side of things, but really enjoying it. So I'm hoping that my involvement um, in this committee will mean that I can get more opportunities to come to the annual conference. And we're definitely trying to get our faculty much more involved in the Sakai community. So we've encouraged them to present at the virtual conference that's happening um, sort of later this year. So we're gonna try and sort of be more proactive all around as a university, but also in the Southern African region. All right, thank you. Uh, next around is Fawei. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fawei Geng uh, from Oxford University in the UK. Uh, I'm a learning technologist. Uh, I think in America, you call it instructional designer. Um, we started using Sakai since 2007. And uh, actually, my first Sakai conference, it was in Paris 2008, I believe. And then I went to Amsterdam, uh, did an presentation, and met a lot of very interesting people there. Um, haven't been to America for any like, international conference, but uh, love to at some point. Um, I was on the Twitter committee last year, uh, uh, enjoyed it very much, and that's why I'm still here. And uh, um, I've been participating in the teaching learning call uh, in the last I think this year and last last year uh, really enjoyed as well. Um, I'm hoping uh, we will have like four or five presentations for the virtual Sakai conference in November. So yeah, this is me. Thanks. This is Janice Smith. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Louisa? Yes. Okay, I am on the committee representing portfolios. I've been involved with Sakai from almost the beginning and my purpose in Sakai has, has been the open source portfolio tools in Sakai, but now that those are being downgraded, uh, I'm lead on a project called the Karuda Open Source Portfolio, which is just about ready for prime time. Um, so I'm hoping to rehabilitate the portfolio portion of Twisia um, aimed at new applications used in Sakai like Karuda, but there could be others, uh, LTI integrated, and I'm looking forward to continuing on the committee. I think I've been on the committee for about four years. Thanks. Jennifer? 
Hello, Hello? Jennifer. Jennifer, can you talk? Hmm. Uh, if you have problem with the audio, you probably have to activate the Java or the Flash in uh, uh, big button. So if you have problem, we can do a little bit of technical support later. All right. So we skip Jennifer for the moment. Uh, Jolie, can you talk? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let me read the Jolie's uh, introduction here because uh, anything on the chat will not be recorded. Um, so Jolie being involved in the Sakai community for the past five years and was a co-recipient of the Tracia Award, the ePortfolio category in 2014. Uh, very glad to have Jolie on board this year. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer will call in later. And um, okay, let's move on to Mary Jo. Hi, yes, can everyone hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, I'm at Shadron State College and I've worked in the Teaching and Learning Center there for the past three years. I've gone back to faculty this year, um, but I've been working closely with our Sakai support people on campus and just interested in learning more about how people are using Sakai to teach in different ways. and. Uh, so I think I've been on this committee for the past two or three years. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I come to it from more of a faculty viewpoint than probably most of you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mary, do you have to leave a bit early today? How long do yes. you stay here? I have to go teach in a little bit. Little bit. I'm trying to kind of do notes and and uh, things like that before class. So yeah, I'll be leaving a little bit early. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I see Jennifer is coming back. Jennifer, can you talk? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Very yes. good. Very good. Okay. Um, my name is Jennifer Laudiana. I'm from Walsh University in Canton, Ohio, and I have been on the teaching and learning call probably the last six, eight months and attended my first Aperio. So I'm new to this committee. Um, I'm interested to see what kinds of submissions we have and how the committees work, and I'm excited to uh, work more with the folks from the teaching and learning call. Hey everyone, my name is Moby Wakuma, coming from the University of Baltimore in Maryland. This is my first time on the committee. Uh, I'm an instructional designer here at the university uh, in charge of primarily uh, faculty development and support. I'm you know, just looking to um, broaden my horizon in the Sakai community and learn from everyone and help out where I can. It's, it's great to be here. Thank you. Welcome, Movie, to the committee. Uh, next, Pat, uh, can you talk? Hello, Pat? Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's move on to Salva. Hi, uh, this is Salva Khan from Texas State University, uh, where I do video and media and also teach as an adjunct in the School of Journalism. Uh, I've been involved in Sakai for, I think, about 10, maybe 11 years um, with the teaching and learning group from the beginning and with Twizia from the beginning. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to just being a member of the committee.
Uh, thank you, Sawa. Uh, it's so nice to uh, have you for another year or many more years to come. Um, so, Dina, you joined. Uh, do you want to do the introduction? Hi, I'm Dina Kurzweil. I'm at the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. This is my second year as a member of the Twizia team. Looking forward to another great year. Thank you. All right, so uh, do we have everybody? I think Beth uh, wasn't able to talk, and also Pat Miller. I think that's about everybody, right? Okay. Very good. Um, okay, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, we set up the Tricia 2016 page there. We also have everybody's uh, contact info, and uh, many of you have very kindly updated information there. Thank you so much. Um, but we also have lost a couple of people this year. Uh, for example, as you know, that Jim uh, Masnetti. Uh, has moved on to a new job, uh, so he's no longer with um, Sashinet or Scriba slash Scriba. Um, and also we have another person, I think was, uh, wait a second, what's his name? Uh, Cheryl, what's his name? Um, is it David? Um, yeah, it was David. It David was is David, you? yeah. David will be busy this year, so he uh, declined to join the committee this year. But he will, uh, he wants to join next year, so uh, we we'll probably have him back next year. Okay, so I guess um, we move on to the second item on the agenda. Uh, first, let me tell you some of the changes Sharon and I have made over the past month. Uh, over the summer, we talked a little bit, and we decided to use the bigger button instead of cauliflower. Uh, there are a few benefits. For example, we can record a session, and also uh, teaching and learning call also use a bigger button, and the quality is a little bit better. Um, I think more people would uh, get used to it, and also it has a calling number. You can do both. Um, but definitely um, provide your feedback uh, if you don't feel like using it or if you have issues with audio, uh, let us know. And hopefully um, we provide the feedback to the Big Button company and maybe make it better. And the second change is that we talked with Ian Dolphin um, and we got a official Twizier. There's some feedback there a little bit. I think there's another coin number. Yes. Okay. So we uh, obtained an official Twizier email. Uh, it's a Twizier at aperio.org. The idea is to pass it along to all the chairs or co chairs of Twizier committee. Uh, so it's not restricted to one person. All the official notifications or announcement will, coming fr will, will be coming from this official email. And the third is that we, because we got this official Twizia uh, email, we obtained the uh, Google Space. We're going to move and archive all the previous Twizia uh, files in uh, the Twizia account, uh, Google, uh, Google Drive account. So uh, it's more streamlined and easy to find stuff. Yeah, because we've been having this Twizia um, award for many years, and hopefully many years more to come. We want to have a central location to uh, store and manage all the files. So these are the changes we made in the past month. So do you guys have any questions about these changes? Or any comments about these changes? I think it's a really good idea to have the uh, the email so that you know people will know where the information's coming from. Thank you, Sola. Okay, so if you have other recommendations to make the management uh, and also the workflow easier, 
uh, let us know and uh, we will try to accommodate. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Cheryl, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I don't. I'm hoping it's going to make it easy. I mean, some of the things that we've done have just been so that um, Louisa and I can share information more easily and something doesn't just land up in one of our inboxes and not the other. So hopefully they, the idea of this will be to sort of share the workload and then be able to pass things on. So whilst we're very excited to be new chairs and co-chairs, you notice we are planning for the future without us. We'll never manage what Sol will manage in terms of 10 years of the committee and chairing it. <laughs> okay, so uh, very good. Thank you, Julie, you commented, uh, good changes, thank you. Um, okay, so next the big issue is that we need to schedule a regular meeting for this academic year. Uh, in the past, uh, the time is 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time uh, on Tuesday. Right? Um, so I'm wondering if that is still the best of the time to meet, or do you guys have other suggested time slot? Uh, because now Twisia community is expanding globally. So we have, for example, Cheryl in South Africa, Fawe in UK. And we're hoping to get some other uh, involvement in Spain, for example, or maybe South Africa. So the time difference uh, can be a big issue here. So uh, I'm wondering, do we set up a doodle again? Um, so Mary Jo commented that Tuesday or Thursday morning work best for, for her. Uh, so Tuesday and Thursday. I don't want to conflict with the teaching and learning call on, one, uh, on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So any other time in the mornings seem to be okay. So do you guys have any comment on Monday? Because on Monday I usually have office staff meetings, so that may not be the best time in the world to meet. Uh, so for me, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday and the Friday, okay, except the 10 a.m. on Wednesday. All right. So 11 also works for Cheryl. Okay. Thursday good? Okay. So looks like we have a trend here. So it looks like a Tuesday and the Thursday are the best, right? So Monday is not good for anybody. Okay. I think we all agree. Okay. Um, so now we have a live doodle, doodle link going on in the chat. Okay, so people keep voting. So, so it looks like a Tuesday and a Thursday uh, are the winners, but a Tuesday seem to have one more vote. Okay, so okay, let's close close in on the vote. So Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday seems to be good for almost everybody. Tuesday, okay. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday might. I just have to figure out my logistics on a Tuesday. I think I can make it work. I think okay. the only hard thing for me is just the time of the day, the uh -huh. smack bang on my child lifting schedule. But I can work around it. If Tuesday works for everybody, I'll figure out how to be somewhere. Even if I'm sitting in a car with the big blue button on my laptop, that will be fine. <laughs> Do you have Wi-Fi in a car? <laughs> I can, yeah, we do. Um, we do a lot of not Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is not great here, but we've got quite a good mobile network, so um, we can. I can wow. make that work. Yeah. Gosh, I cannot imagine the data plan you have because we have very high data plan payments in the U.S. I don't know if you have to how much you have to pay using the your data plan. Yeah, our data plans are quite good because I think with the access issues of um, broadband being so bad in Africa, people have had the cell phone companies and mobile companies have really had to work hard on things. So it does seem like Tuesday. Is there anybody okay. that would vote that Tuesday at 11 Eastern Standard doesn't work if I'm going back over? I'm trying right. to read so, that quickly. Anybody so think that like, doesn't work? Yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we are kind of agreeing on 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. So any objections? Uh, 
Okay, going once, going twice, sold. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> well we have uh, we have Tuesday, eleven o'clock Eastern time. Okay. Uh, right now it's the I think it's the summertime, the daylight saving time. So if it's 11 Eastern time, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time will be that five or six in South Africa. I don't know. Uh, sure, is that five or six in in South Africa? Is it six? I think a uh, five right now. Okay. So uh, what time is it in UK? Is that okay for you, Fawe? All right. So that and now it's half past four in the UK, so it's fine. Between five, uh, four to five, is absolutely fine for, uh, for me. Okay. Okay, Thanks. that's great. Uh, but then, if we move forward uh, into maybe November, it will be Eastern Standard Time, not daylight saving time. Let me think. It will be. Uh, I don't know if the South Africa or UK have daylight saving time too. Uh, I think UK. Um, I'm always confused about that. Um, now it's half past four. It will become half past three, I believe. A bit earlier. So okay. I think that still still be fine. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, so so that's good for UK. So how yeah. how about South Africa, Cheryl? Is that okay for you? It will be like four in South Africa. Don't know. Okay. Okay, sure. sorry, that should be fine. I just keep pressing the wrong mute and unmute button. Sorry, everybody. All right. No, no, uh -huh. it should be fine. We'll figure it out. Well, let's just keep oh. going. And if there's a problem, we can always just touch base again. All right, so for now, let's meet uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Good, we're settled. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so um, we have uh, a few other items on the agenda to discuss, uh, but do you guys want to decide if we want to meet again next week? Or we, uh, because this is still early in the season, uh, I look at the calendar from last year, we met in October. So we have a little bit of time. Uh, but before you decide on that, please look at the proposed timeline. Oh, Fabi is on leave. I think, Cheryl, are you, are you on vacation next week too? Um, nope, I'm fine. No? Okay. No, nothing happening right. for me. All right. Um, so let's look at the proposed timeline and also uh, what we left off uh, in May. Um, and we have a lot of things to discuss and uh, make a decision on. Um, so we can decide if we need to meet more frequently. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Um, for this year, I have to, uh, Shara and I have to do a few more management um, activities. So first, uh, we need to move and archive all the Twisia files in the Peru Google account. And also, for some reason, the Twisia page on the apparel.org website is done. I cannot find that page anywhere. Um, so Salva, do you know what happened there? Do you remember? Because I think it was uh, done since the new upgrade in that website. Do you know anything, uh, Salva? Um, I, no, I mean, I haven't heard anything. Uh, the last I heard was that uh, the uh, the woman who, t who takes care of the site, Michelle Hall, was uh -huh. putting up the videos, you know, from the last year's, from this year's winners. Uh -huh. um, and I thought the page was up, but uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I we can check. We can check with her. Okay, I couldn't find it. Uh, but anyway, that page need to uh, need to be redone. We have uh, different uh, files in there, so uh, I will talk with the our website manager and see what go, what's going on. 
Um, but aside from that, we have another page. It's on the Sakai project page. And we have all the video in there. Thank you, Selva. I saw those video there. Uh, but I, I don't know who managed that page. Probably also Ian or maybe Neil. So I will talk with them, see how we uh, take care of that page. So these are some management uh, items. Um, uh, yes, Fabi, that's the link. Yes, indeed. OK, so do you guys have any comments about this management? Management issues? Yes, that's Michelle Hall. Does, oh, she does both sides. OK, great. So one point of contact. That's easier. We're good? OK. Uh, all right, so let's uh, move on to the most important agenda item today. Uh, let's discuss the focus or the timeline um, of this year's Twisier committee meetings. So from uh, last meeting in May, we discussed how we want to expand the Twisier committee, uh, Twisier work. Um, Twisier committee want to keep the focus on teaching and the learning. But meanwhile, we want to expand the, the, the scope of the project. But how to expand it, we haven't made a decision. We have several different ideas. Uh, for example, uh, we want to spend to uh, include other products or projects in the apparel uh, community. Uh, we have portfolios, projects face-to-face, -face, higher ed, these categories. But how about we expand to um, uh, other products, for example, uPortal, uh, a few others. And also, we want to have some local representation. For example, we have a uh, South Africa local award, uh, or maybe Spanish community. They have their own. Uh, awards in Spanish, right? a few other ideas. Uh, and also, how we collaborate with other uh, sections of Aperio. Uh, for example, how we work with the developers uh, who work on those uh, products. Uh, some of them are still in incubation. So how do we work with them? Uh, so when we think about all those expan expansions of Twisia, we also need to consider the uh, the people, the time, and the resources. So how do we go about this? Who does what? And who we volunteer? So if we have local regional awards, we have different languages, and where do we get all those committee judges? Yeah, these are all the issues. Um, and also, do we want to modify the rubrics to reflect those changes? Um, last year, we spent so much time just to uh, make changes to the rubrics. And um, if we expand, we also need additional time to modify the rubrics. That's going to uh, So this is where we left off last year. Um, so if we go around to discuss all this, uh, I think we need to make a cutoff time. We can continue discussing, but at a certain point, I think we need to stop and uh, open the Twisia award to the apparel committee and receive all the submissions. Right. So that's why I also put the proposed the timeline here. This is the timeline we send out in our first email. Share, uh, the first email Sharon and I sent out to you guys. Um, so we have, uh, from our past experiences, uh, September, we have the first committee meeting. And then from September to December, we can discuss anything we want. Uh, the expansions, the rubric changes, marketing and communication, the sponsorship. And then in January, we start receiving the submissions and start the judging of the first round um, and the second round. In April, we will announce the winners. And then 
uh, in May will produce videos and the conference prep uh, preparations. In June, we attend a conference. So this is the general timeline. So from this timeline, I think we have time from now to December to discuss. I think it should be um, beginning of December. Uh, we need to send out announcement sometime either late November or the beginning of December, immediately after the Thanksgiving. Oh, by the way, we have Thanksgiving in the U.S. We have it this year, I think, the last week of November. Uh, usually, a lot of people take one week off uh, the end of November, right? So we need to take that in take that into account too. Um, okay, so this is uh, the general timeline here. Um, so we have pretty much two and a half months to discuss the expansion and the change of the rubrics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, all right, any comments? How much expansion we can get? Or is it going to be a multi-year plan? So how much changes, how much change we can do this year? And then also leave room for the next year. Uh, Cheryl has a comment here. Um, so I think local area regions want to offer an award, then they should use regional network. Uh, perhaps guidance from a main Twisia committee person. Um, and Jennifer mentioned that uh, I like the idea of a local award for the other user groups. I mean, I think it's a lovely idea, but I don't, I think we have to be careful about this committee's workload. And I think perhaps saying to people it would be welcomed would make people feel it was a possibility and that we could open it up more. Um, but I don't think this committee should run a whole lot of other regional award processes. Otherwise, our timeline won't be now from December through to April. We'll be doing all sorts of other things. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm sorry. I would agree with Cheryl, and but we may want to be... Uh, to have some coordination with other awards, especially if, um, well, we, we may be considering things like timing when, in other words, for them to offer their awards maybe before our process begins, and that way they might feed into our awards. Yeah. Um, yes, well, let me read some of the comments here. Dina said, I think we should try to provide a rubric or review a rubric to help local networks, but I worry about our workload too. Uh, Janice, uh, I think we should prioritize our possible changes and tackle one change or two changes each year. I, I agree with that, yes. Uh, so if we think about the several changes we proposed, um, so the, probably local award is on the lower uh, level of the prioritized uh, list. Uh, do you agree? So we may think about other changes like expansion to other projects first. Uh, so if we have a local award, uh, because we've never done that before, so possibly that local award, we have a main person to take charge, then that person uh, will pilot this local award for a year, see how that works out. And then maybe next year, uh, we learn from this local award and then expand or not expand, we decide next year. What do you think? How, how about, I think I agree uh, with all. Um, we, sh um, we should focus on the twist here and the rubric and uh, um, and the, the make the application and judging all this process um, uh, easier and maybe I don't know maybe we can I mean because we talk about we have some time to discuss about how we can refine the current twist year award criteria and rubric and maybe the second priority will be expand to the other project and then completely agree with everyone. The third priority might be to, to, to think about local awards. Um, 
but they can be um, interrelated, for example, refining our current Twisted uh, rubric and uh, uh, make the application everything better. We can, I don't know, probably we can briefly summarize our process and uh, thinking behind it. And maybe we can give this idea or case study to the local uh, organization if they want to run a ward and instead of just you know provide a lot of information just tell them what what are we going to do and they can learn from us and they can try one year out and see how it goes and um, I'm just really cautious about uh, the time although we said we have time to, to, to discuss from now to de December but we need to take into consideration about we have to implement things. For example, if we want to change anything about a website and a rubric or anything, we need to implement them as well. We need that will uh, be uh, need to be considered uh, in terms of timing. Okay. Um, okay. I think we are in agreement. Thank you, Farway. Uh, we also have agreement from a comment from Jolie and Jennifer and Cheryl that uh, we uh, can open up to the discussion about local words, but then will be lower on the priority list, right? So we have to think about the resource and the interest. Uh, Moby had a question, are there local awards currently? Uh, I would say no, we don't have one yet. Uh, what I can tell you guys is that uh, Marist this year is considering to have a local smaller scale Twizia award. Uh, it's still in discussion, uh, but if we uh, finally uh, We'll do it. It will be this uh, fall. Uh, what we're thinking, planning, is that the winners or um, all of them can submit to Twizier Awards uh, in 2016, right? So, but uh, it's still in discussion. When I have any updates, I will tell you guys in this committee meeting. Thank you. All right. So. This is not too bad. Okay, so local award it will be lower on the party list this year. So we will bring up this issue again next year. Now, how about expansions to other tools or other products in the uh, Aperio community? Well, we have a lot of tools. Many of them are very technical or focused on just one individual um, aspect of teaching and learning online. Um, so do you guys, um, especially the new committee members, do you know how many categories we have? Um, it, uh, what's the page that we can see all the categories? Let me think. Um, I mean, I think to some extent we have opened the tools already without realizing it because the, I mean, teaching with Sakai almost implies the Sakai and doesn't imply things like OAE. I mean, the name implies that we're very narrow, but actually our submissions have been a little bit more open and beyond, you know, sort of Sakai as a tool on its own and have been people who've used Sakai and OAE together people who've used, oh, you know, sort of the open cast lecture recording as part of this, you know, their learning management system and have integrated things. So I think we've been starting to open things up without really being conscious of it. And I think Ian Dolphin raised an interesting comment about Twister now is almost means something on its own as an as a as a sort of a, an image. Like it's it, it's got its it stands for teaching you know, Sakai Innovation World, but when you say the word Twister, everybody thinks, um, you know, of it as, you know, they think of it as a teaching and learning award that's part of the Aperio network. So I think we could open it up a bit. And if we use things like um, Xerti or, you know, the other sort of what opened it up and said, you know, put it in, we just, we'd have to be able to have access to see it in some way. I mean, we don't actually go into people's sites anywhere to have a look at it. We rely on them representing what they've done to us and showing us in you know and, and motivating to us you know what it is that they do so i mean i i don't know whether we need to solicit for new projects or whether we just need to let people know that we're open to mm. to other options yeah uh, i think from the developers world they have something called Aperio fellows 
uh, they use this to recognize the key contributors in the Aperio community in terms of uh, technical uh, developments. Uh, it's not strictly about teaching and learning, it's more about developing the background and backstage. Let so me they, interrupt Louisa and say that yeah. I'm an Imperial Fellow and I earned it as a functional person. So functional oh, people can cool. earn fellows and we could nominate people from uh -huh. teaching and learning. That could be something that somebody in our community could do more of. They're very okay. welcoming of, of functional people, and I'm on the committee to select new fellows and would uh, support any of our nominations. So they are opening up. That's great. They okay. have been. I was a lot not. I was elected a fellow five years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great to hear. Uh, so we also need to spread the words. So a parallel fellow open up to the entire community. I think teaching and learning also need to open up to the whole community, right? It's a good analogy. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a both ways. Yeah. Okay, so I skip some comments here. So um, Janice, you comment that has anyone from another Peril project expressed interest in establishing a word? I don't think so. Um, do you have any contact in other project we could approach to see if they are interested? Um, Janice, because you mentioned the uh, fellow, the, the, the apparel fellows opening up to the whole community. Uh, do you think you can ask any of them, see how they want to collaborate? That's a good idea. I could, uh, uh, I don't have an email list of all the fellows, only the people who were on the committees the last couple of years, but mm -hmm. I could reach out to them and say, who might be interested in, in uh, collaborating with us to establish an award? Uh, because uh, it seems that we have established a precedent that we have categories and a category for, um, let's say, U-Portal might be a different category than some of our existing ones. So we'd need some people that help would help us shape new categories or figure out how to adapt the old categories. Okay. But I will do something before the next meeting to see whether somebody has interest within the within the fellows. Uh -huh. Okay, so I will put on as one of the action items. So Janice, you will reach out to the apparel fellows, see what they think. So at least uh, you know, reaching uh, uh, out, reaching uh, out, and see what they think. A representative sample of them. Yeah. There's no list of all the fellows that I know of. Just the people on the committee for selecting new fellows. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Uh, okay, so that's one thing. So far we want to include OEE and the Xerti. So I think that those are very great tools. Uh, Jennifer will say uh, big old button or Xerti. Um, I think a big button is a LTI integration in uh, Sakai, I think. Um, but we definitely have some courses running uh, in big button as a webinar format. Yeah, that's definitely a very good idea. Uh, we can definitely highlight those examples. Um, do not make them separate. And also, Jennifer said, Sakai is the base for the various tools. Uh, well, in a way, because OEE is separate from Sakai, it can run uh, standalone. Uh, but some other tools have to integrate into Sakai to work. For example, Big Button. Um, so we also have some other lecture capture tools. Uh, connect to Sakai using LTI. Uh, Dina said, we wonder if we can uh, need bigger categories instead of a specific uh, categories. This way it is a larger group and does not exclude people. Yes, that's another great idea. Hey, uh, this is Dina. Yes. Um, yeah, one of the things I worry about is like we look at something like um, Exerti or something, and there are lots of content kind of creation tools, 
and I think about what those larger categories are. And if we could say, you know, use of content creation tools, we then have Xerti and other tools, and we're looking at kind of innovative teaching and learning ways to use them. And that way we keep the same hemisphere going of how are you innovatively using these tools to teach your students? Because there's a part of me that doesn't want to lose that focus of the, from my perspective as an educator, of the teaching and learning and just go straight to the technology. So just to give you some perspective and, you know, because I, I think if we go too far down the technology, well, then it's becoming a technology award and not a, a teaching award and, a, and more of an educational award. This is Janice. And last year when we were discussing these changes, that was the overwhelming vote of the committee to keep it a teaching and learning award and not get buried in technology innovations. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think we agree on focusing on the learning and the teaching, uh, the the approach or the scenario, but not the specific tools, right? Okay, so that's uh, that's a very quick uh, consensus we reached that. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so Selva also posted the link to the 2015 Aperio Fellows. Um, Okay, so that's a very great link to have. Um, Cheryl, you want to comment on the categories? You want to talk? Um, well, I think we, I mean, we do have this overwhelming sense that we need to be um, focusing on the teaching and learning. And I was just looking at what people said and listening to Dina and thinking, you know, we've got the idea of sort of the completely online course or the blended course that type of thing but we've been thinking very much a lot of our submissions have been like course-based a semester course you know using it in something you're teaching for a longer period of time I wonder if we think about using it for a creative intervention or this content creation idea where it's okay to use a tool for a week or a particular activity or a particular purpose teaching and learning purpose but it doesn't actually have to be um, something that's you know, that's sort of systematic in a week by week annual sort of basis. So we could think about something that's a really good, you know, Xerti would be really good for a component of a course, for example, and it could be terribly innovative to do a particular thing. And if we thought about it slightly differently like that, then we'd be opening up the scope, but we wouldn't be focusing on the tool because you could be using, you know, Sakai or OE to do exactly that one thing, you know, something really good with group work, for example, but it's not sustained over the whole, you know, whole semester based course, as we would call it. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think aloud on how we could conceptualize our categories to allow for a broadening of purpose and more flexibility, but not tool specific. And then we do like for why I said, but we, it's only tools, the only tools that we consider are ones that are within the Aperio community, because we're obviously not going to you know, look at somebody's use of Google Docs, for example, or a wiki somewhere as an innovative practice if it's not embedded in our... Yes, in our indeed. I, I think this is very important. I also, you also remind me of the ePortfolio project, because many of those are not just related to one course. It's a program level setup. You know, maybe two years or three years, uh, they start using the portfolio by the end of their um, uh, stay in the institution. When they graduate, they have completed the entire portfolio. So it's a program level, it's not a course. So we can go small, like two weeks or uh, a month using certain tools, or we can go um, much longer, go to the program level, several years to use the portfolio tool. So it's very different. You know, how can we includes all those different practices. Uh, it, it's very crucial. Um, so on the comments, I also see that um, the list of Aperio Fellows, um, these are from last year's, um, but they don't have the whole list. Uh, Selva, did you mean that they don't have the list of all the previous years? Yes, uh, what Janice has written is that it's not the complete list. And I was just saying, I, I don't know why they don't have the whole list, but 
that's what they have right now. It has okay. to do with the website uh, revisions. They put up just what they had time for, and they didn't think about listing all the back people. Mm -hmm. I kind of get that. I don't even know who owns the copy of the full list. Um, I, I think I saw it somewhere, uh, maybe on the Sakai project site. Let's see. I'll look. Yeah, sakaiproject.org, that page, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why for one of the management issues, I think we need to put everything on one location, central location, so we can find things easily. Okay. Any other comments? Because we're already 12 o'clock, so... Uh, I want to wrap up at the at this moment. So we have a lot of uh, good comments here. Um, we want to continue next time, but do you guys think you can meet next week? I just want to interrupt and say yes. All the fellows except 2015 are on the Confluence page. So oh, there's a Confluence page. Okay, great. Yeah, no emails, unfortunately, but the names. All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we continue to meet next week. All right, yes, yes. All right, because we have the recording, if you cannot meet, you can always listen to the recording. Uh, but again, uh, the most important part is uh, joining the discussion. So I would still ask you guys to come if possible. All right, so, so let me... So we're meeting I, on Tuesday, right? Yeah, let me repeat. 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Uh, we may have to skip a couple of days in, in terms of holidays or other things, busy schedules, but we are going to meet next week. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's good that we meet. I mean, I think if somebody can't come, we'll just record it. And there must be a way that we can share these recordings, Louisa, perhaps by putting a yes. link up. Uh, yes, the, um, the uh, Neil uh, has uh, the password to the videos. So he will download the video and share it with us. But it's not immediate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes about a few days to have the video. That's great. I mean, I think it could help. And I think if for some reason I can't make it or whatever, we must think that's the advantage of having two co-chairs. We just go with it. If you can't do it, but I can, and there are enough people who can join us, we just see if we can keep the momentum going. Okay. But I definitely think we've got some very useful ideas. And I think I'm going to try and see. If you say the chat doesn't save, I'm just going to do a sort of a control, a sort of a kind of copy of the chat if I can. I think I can just copy... See if there's some way to copy it, just because there's some really good ideas there that, in fact, we did more note-taking in the chat than we did in our etherpad, because that seemed to be easier. So before we close, I'm going to try and see if there's a way one can copy it. I don't know. You copy the chat? Yeah, I don't know uh, if one can. If you want to copy the chat, right-click and uh, select all the uh, copy all text. Oh, yes, I see it. Okay. Because I don't want to lose that, because I think there's some good ideas there, and we want to... Um, be able to work build on them for next time. Yeah, let me just copy all the chat script. Okay. Gosh, it looks very bad. Um, yeah, it does, but it's still, um, we can use it for our notes as well. It's still good for the ideas that we had, and I think we were getting nearer to our um, focus about the teaching and learning stuff, so. Okay. Okay, everybody, thank you. All right, see you guys next week. Thank you, chairs. Bye. Thanks, chairs.